Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog. And today we're gonna do another The Road to Dark Web episode. This one is gonna focus on Spider-Man and it's mainly gonna talk about the first eight issues of the current Amazing Spider-Man run that's going on right now by, um, I think it's by Zeb Wells and John Romita Jr. who is the creative team on it. I almost said Nick Spencer, but I'm like, nope, he wrapped his run up um, and Zeb Wells has taken over. A, a writer who I'm actually a big fan of, but I will say I'm, I'm a little 50-50 on this run so far and we're gonna talk about that. Uh, this first eight issues are collected in the first two trade paperbacks which are out there. And I know some of you are gonna say, yeah, but still the road to Dark Web, you need to talk about issues nine through 13 also leading up to Dark Web and we definitely will, but I'm going to call that the the Gold Goblin episode because that deals more with Norman Osborn. It does have a lot of Spider-Man stuff in it, but I'm also going to touch on some of the Gold Goblin comic book as well in that episode. So we're going to cover eight episodes or eight issues here in this episode, and then we're going to do another like six or seven issues in the next episode. Uh, and it'll be one that'll probably it'll happen before the end of the season because I'm going to save all the dark web stuff that comes out. We're not going to do reviews or discussions of them right away, right when they drop. We're going to probably save them all for January when season six of Venom Vlog starts. So, you know, start reading them now. You have plenty of time to read them, catch up. And then in January, we'll start diving into the, to the issues themselves of Dark Web. So for this episode, issues one through eight of Amazing Spider-Man, by again, by Zeb Wells and John Romita Jr., this starts off in a way that I didn't expect. And sometimes I'm usually okay with that, where I'm like, all right, this is good. I like when writers do their own thing and they try to you know, subvert your expectations. And I really thought after the Nick Spencer run, it was like, okay, he's you know, met up with MJ. There looks like they're gonna try to build the relationship. It looks like things might go in a, a, a positive direction for Spider-Man for once in a, in a while, you know? And then it didn't, <laughs> it's, and I should have expected that because that seems to be always what Marvel does. They always bring Spider-Man right back down to the bottom as soon as they can. And I understand that's like a, a trope of the character. It's kind of built into the character that he's always the underdog. But man, oh man, like it, it would be nice as someone who has also been brought back down to level one a couple times, I guess, um, throughout life because, hey, sometimes life just kicks you and then that's very realistic. It happens to Peter Parker, but it seems to always happen to Peter Parker. And I would like to see a little bit more success. You know, Dan Slott did it for a while where he went too far with the success. I think he had Peter Parker run his own company and everything. And although that gave us new stories and it it gave us a you know, different sides of Peter Parker we never seen too much of before, um, he brought him right back down to the bottom again. And so it was like, ah, man, these these things don't last very long. And, and I would like to see a, a little bit of longevity with some of the positivity in Peter's life just from time to time, just to shake it up a little bit. <laughs> just feel like this guy is, I know he's a perpetual underdog, but man, oh man, give the guy a break a little bit. So this issue, the first one starts off with him do, having done something bad like six months prior and it, it changed everything. So now Mary Jane and him are not together, even though it looks like, and they weren't together together at the end of Nick Spencer's run, but they were, they were in a good place, uh, you know. And in this one, they're not. Uh, she's not really wanting to answer his calls. She's with some guy named Paul. I think he has two kids and they I think they call her mommy. Like there's there's like a lot happening in that first issue where you're like, okay, what's that? They call her mommy? Like, how is how could she have kids? You know, and it just kind of throws you through a loop. So so I was intrigued to say the least. I was like, hey, you know what? I'm at least intrigued. Um, but then you find out that whatever Peter did, it ruined his relationship with Aunt May, with the Fantastic Four, with other heroes. The Avengers don't trust Spider-Man anymore. It really screwed up his whole life. And uh, and then even Peter is down in the dumps again, and, and he's finding out that his old roommate, who is, uh, you know, the son of uh, Joe Robbie Robertson, uh, is, you know, dating the daughter of Tombstone, and he wants to ask for her hand in marriage. So he has to go and meet Tombstone for dinner and, and ask for him, you know, his daughter's hand in marriage. And he agrees. He's like, yeah, you seem like a good kid. I guess I'll let that happen. But he's still a bad guy and a crime lord. And now there's a war going on since Kingpin's not around anymore uh, for territory in New York. And, you know, obviously uh, Tombstone is caught up in that and he's betrayed by a couple other gangs. So now he is looking for Spider-Man to try to help him set it straight again to where he's kind of in charge of more stuff. And Spider-Man's like his unwilling assistant, but not really, because then obviously Peter fights back against him. But then he gets tied up and beaten up and almost murdered, you know, in the subway. I mean, it, there's some intense things in this. Um, and But I will say, like, I was intrigued. I'm, I'm like, yeah, you know what? I don't like what they're doing overall with Spider-Man in, in this first, like, let's say the first five issues, because that's the first trade paperback. But I still found myself intrigued. I'm like, well, there's still some beats in here that I really enjoy. And one of my favorites was that throughout the whole book, Peter just can't, you know, 
have this nice moments with Aunt May anymore. Every time he goes over to see her, she's like, look, I, I don't I don't want you here. Because before you used to lie, and I don't know what you were lying about. I could never tell exactly what you were covering up from me, but it was it seemed important to you, and, and it seemed to make you happy on some level. So I didn't pry, and I, I never wanted to pry like what it was. But now you lie to me, and you feel so cold when you do it. You're not the same kid I raised. You're not the same man that I knew, you know, up until like a year ago. Like you're you you're different, and I don't like this. And it's because he is. He's kind of bitter. Whatever decision he made six months ago that changed kind of things around him and his relationships with people, it was bad, I guess. And uh, and so they slowly are revealing that. I don't want to spoil you know too too much. They haven't revealed everything either, so I'm sure we'll learn more about that in time. Um, but yeah, he's just kind of like not the same Peter. And so having that bad relationship with Aunt May was breaking my heart, actually. Uh, Zeb Wells was doing a really good job. Those scenes in particular I thought were really good. And then finally at the end of the first trade, you know, they sit down and he's he's now fought Tombstone and he's went up against some bad guys and he's won. And now when Aunt May asks, like, hey, why is your why do you have a black eye? Why is your you know jaw bruised? And he says, Oh, you know, I was trying to learn how to skateboard again or something. And she smiles and she goes, Okay. You know, she's like, I I, I accept this. Like you're you're lying for the reasons that you used to lie to me and whatever it is you're becoming the old Peter again. And he starts with Aunt May. That's the first relationship he kind of rebuilds. And I'm like, okay, all right, okay. I, 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 Again, I don't overall like that they threw him right into the shit again, but it is, it is nice to see him have these moments with these characters, especially with Aunt May. You know, I'm a big fan of that character and it's, it's cool when they do stuff with her. Um, like when she ran Feast and, and all that stuff and she knew, uh, you know, Martin Lee, the, the Mr. Negative. So I was kind of like, ah, this is cool. Like she, that's the first relationship he's going to rebuild on his path to redemption for whatever the hell it was he did, you know? So that's where the first trade ends. And I thought it was a very strong end to the trade because it made me go, okay, even though there's a lot of stuff in here, I don't like the tombstone stuff was, was great. You know, the Spider-Man stuff during the tombstone stuff was really great. And, and then also this is, is fantastic. So the second trade picks up and it starts, it only has three issues in it, issue six, seven, and eight. But issue six was like a 100 page extravagant, you know, extravaganza issue. So that's why the trade, it's still thick like the first trade was, but it's um, it only has, you know, three issues in it. But the first issue is massive with a bunch of short stories in it, which I'm not going to really go over here. Um, but there's there's some good ones in there. So I highly recommend you checking these out. But the sixth issue is setting up a new uh, there's like a machine that adopts the powers of, it's like a Mazo. It kind of adopts the powers of the Sinister Six. And then the Sinister Six are also involved and they're fighting Spider-Man. And then they find out that their powers were just used to power this machine. And there's this villain that is like an AI that's trying to figure out who Spider-Man is, but not like, oh, it's Peter Parker. The, the machine knows it's Peter Parker. It's already deduced his secret identity, but it wants to know what kind of man he is because He's inconsistent. You look at the history of Spider-Man and there's things he's done that have been very heroic. Then there's been whatever the hell he did six months ago that is, has changed everything. So this AI wants to know what kind of man he is and Peter shows it by uh, by willing to be willing to die for this, for you know, for the Sinister Six. They're going to get killed by the AI and he's like, no. And the AI is like, I don't understand. They're your villains. They were just trying to kill you a second ago. And he goes, right and they weren't gonna because I'm, i always find a way to beat them and he goes but i'm so i'm not gonna let you kill them like we will i'll web them up and the police will take them and if they break out in you know six weeks i'll fight them again that's how we do things because i do not kill and that's when the ai goes see this is the kind of man spider-man is this is who he really is not who he is under the mask this this action right here and so by doing that you know he kind of gives up and, and self implodes or whatever. And, uh, and Spider-Man is uh, left with the black cat who gives him a big smooch. Uh, so it looks like they're going to build that relationship again uh, for whatever reason. Um, but she's really kind of a distraction in a way too, because the arms of, uh, you know, Dr. Octopus kind of come in and, and, and take snap a picture of that happening, I guess, and try to blackmail Spider-Man. Um, so we'll see, you know, what side everyone's on. I'm guessing Felicia probably didn't really know that was happening. But, uh, you know, Felicia's always kind of had a thing for Spider-Man. Not really Peter so much, but I think over the years she's gotten to like Peter more and uh, and and sees, you know, him as, you know, potential love interest as, as much as Spider-Man. Um, but there's actually a cool scene in this where J. Jonah Jameson, they're throwing a surprise birthday party for Spider-Man, and J. Jonah Jameson gets taken over by Dr. Octopus's arms. 
to go save Spider-Man or to go get Spider-Man to come rescue Otto. And that's a kind of whole fun scene that I don't want to spoil. You know, I don't want to spoil that in too much detail, but that was really fun. So you get to see, you know, Dr. Octopus's arms on J. Jonah Jameson going to get Spider-Man, then joining Spider-Man and then, you know, battling and then eventually meeting back up with Doc Ock. And it's a really good time. So I thought that was probably one of the strongest issues out of all of this next to the Aunt May scene was issue six, where I just like, okay, this is just fun. Classic Spider-Man fighting. And also, who is Peter? Like, you know, if he makes mistakes, does that, does he fall too far off of who he really is? And that's what that issue answered. So it's like, okay, so you're preparing us, I think, for these sins that he's committed. And now you're saying, but he's still Peter Parker. Okay, great. So then they start diving more into the, you know, the events that have happened in the past few months. And that's where this book kind of ends, is as Peter's going through that he gets into an encounter with the vulture who finds out that um his his niece or his grand grand niece or something uh she is taken on the vulture mantle and she says like look i can't be like you uh, you know uncle tombs or whatever or grandfather tombs you know you've killed people you're a murderer and he doesn't like this he doesn't like that his you know granddaughter or whatever his relative thinks so little of him and and, and thinks he's a monster and he blames Spider-Man for passing that information on to her, even though Spider-Man's like, I, I didn't pass it on to her. So, um, so I'm, you know, there's a little bit of a mystery there. Again, I don't want to spoil everything in this book. Um, but so Vulture goes and tries to kill Spider-Man. He's like, you, you branded me as a murderer? Fine. I'm going to just straight up kill you because you've ruined my relationship with the one relative that even speaks to me um, after all these years. And uh, and Spider-Man and him, they fight big time, and it's a, it's a brutal fight. Um and then it involves Norman Osborn, who actually has a chance to come save Peter, and he doesn't. Because earlier in the day, you know, Peter gets invited to Oscorp, and when he goes there, he sees Mary Jane. And they finally get to meet and face-to-face -face again, and he starts to rebuild their relationship a little bit. But Peter's kind of like, I don't know, she's with this guy, and then she seems happy. So he's kind of trying to keep his distance. And he's like, what are you doing here? Why are you at Oscorp? And she says, well, my mother, uh, or, you know, my aunt or whatever needs this medicine, and uh, the Krakoans have given it to us, um, you know, the X-Men, the X-People and stuff. And she's like, so I want to just test it. I just want to make sure it's okay. And so Norman offered to help me with that. And then Peter realizes, oh, Norman did this and set this up so they could be in the elevator together. So they could try. So Norman's trying to play matchmaker to make up for the past sins that of, of him trying to ruin all of, you know, Peter's uh, previous relationships. And Peter doesn't like that. So after Mary Jane leaves with the answers that she came for with Paul, you know, Peter turns to Norman. He's like, what are you doing? You're, you're invading my life. And he's like, you know what? I came here. You offered me a job and I'm telling you to shove it up your stupid butt because all you've done is ruin my life. And then you trying to play matchmaker right there is ridiculous. You know, like, I can't believe you would try to use me as a pawn again. And he's like, actually, that's not really what I was trying to do. Um, he goes, I do want you to have healthy relationships. Sure. But I actually brought you here for another reason and peter's like i don't care shove it up your butt <laughs> and then so peter leaves um and then that's when he gets caught up fighting the vulture so in towards the end he's like norman i need your help like you need to send you need to send me some help and norman's like i can't do it peter i'm sorry like you shut me out earlier and i don't want to get involved with your life like you're i'm trying to do what you told me to do so peter has to like huff it over to oscorp break in and steal what uh you know norman was trying to show him which is a new upgraded spider-man costume with a glider like a goblin glider and so you know that way spider-man can now take the fight to vulture with his injuries because he got beat up pretty good and now he takes down the vulture and he goes back to norman he's like dude like what the hell man like you, you want to be a part of my life you don't want to be a part of my life and then they finally talk it out and he's like look peter i realize i've hurt you in ways that i will never be able to really repay you for like in like in a positive way i'll never be able to balance the scale no way He's like, I've taken too much from you. I've tortured you too much. And even though my sins have been taken, I, because of that, I am a better person and I'm trying to be better. And I don't want to ever, you know, I didn't want to get on that goblin glider and go out and save you because for me personally, I thought that would lead me to repeat the sins of my past. And he goes, and I just couldn't do it. He's like, I just, I didn't want muscle memory to kick in and me throw a pumpkin bomb at you. And he's like, so you got to believe me, man. I, I, I stayed away in order to help you. And Peter's like, okay, I, I guess I didn't think about you reforming yourself as an actual good person was going to be so hard for you. And he goes, so I'll tell you what, you stay out of some of these personal parts of my life. And if you want to offer me that job, you know, I'll, I'll take it. And Norman goes, 
yeah, I already knew you were going to take it. And they shook hands and he goes, welcome to the team. So that's where the second trade ends is now Peter Parker works for the Gold Goblin um, and works for Norman Osborn. So we will do another Road to Dark Web episode like this where I'll talk about the Gold Goblin issue one, I believe we'll talk about, and then the remaining Spider-Man issues that lead up to Dark Web. I'm not going to do an X-Men episode of this um, because I feel like we're going to catch up on what the X-Men have been doing all this time in some of the tie-ins when we when we talk about those for Dark Web, because obviously the X-Men play a big part in Dark Web with Madeline Pryor and everything. So we're going to get into all that. Um, I just wanted to make a three-part prelude before this season ends. So this is part two. We talked about Spider-Man, Amazing Spider-Man 1 through 8, and we'll talk about 9 through 13 and Gold Goblin number one the next time. So it'll probably be two or three episodes from now, and we'll dive into that for sure. So for now, let me know what you think of these eight issues down below. Are you liking the new Amazing Spider-Man book? Are you not liking it? I gotta say, I really overall hate the idea of just throwing Peter right back into the crap, but some of the character beats and moments I'm, I'm liking, and I like that they kept Norman as someone who is a good guy now. It's It opens up for new stories, and and uh, and I'm digging it. And now that Peter has to, he's working with Norman Osborn, I'm like, I'm kind of intrigued to see where this goes. So yeah, let me know what you think down below, because obviously Norman's vile, and I don't think there's anything redeemable about him. He's done way too much bad. Um, but uh, it would be neat to see him. Maybe he does. Maybe he'll die a hero and that'll be his legacy. And that will be so wild and different. Uh, I just wouldn't have seen that coming if that ends up being the case. Um, or maybe they'll re if they revert him back to a villain, though, I don't know. I, I think you're done. This is the last story you need to tell with Norman Osborn. And after this, tell some new stories, come up with new villains and everything. Let this be the last story arc of Norman Osborn. Um, that's what that's what this should be, <laughs> you know, so we'll see where they take it and we'll see if that's actually the case. So again, let me know down below what your thoughts are and we'll keep talking down there. Thanks so much for watching the show. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you in the future. Peace.